Hi, welcome to a short video. I'm Nick Davis of N Davis Training, and this is actually about the use of reasonable force in schools in relation to violent behaviour. And it's actually a subject which has had a lot of coverage in the press as of late. Indeed, the BBC ran a report the other day on the survey conducted by the Association of Teachers and Lecturers, which found that four out of ten teachers have been exposed to violent behaviour by pupils at some point. Indeed, 77% of those who said they've been exposed to violent behaviour stated that they've been pushed by a pupil, while 50% said they'd either been kicked or had something thrown at them. Also, 45% of the total number of respondents stated that pupil behaviour in general had got worse over the past two years. So what's the government doing about this? Well, basically, the government says that school staff have a specific power to use reasonable force conferred upon them. And this is actually correct, because they do have a specific power of reasonable force which they can use. And I'm going to basically tell you about this in this video. So if you happen to work in an educational establishment, you're an educational member of staff, then you might be interested to know what these powers are. So keep watching because I'm going to tell you about Section 93 of the Education Inspections Act 2006. And I'm also going to uh, tell you exactly what powers are conferred on staff by that section. So let's have a look at section 93, what it says regarding the powers conferred on school staff, including teachers and others. Now members of staff have the power to use force as a result of subsection 1 of 93, which states the following. A person to whom this section applies may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances for the purpose of preventing a pupil from doing or continuing to do any of the following, namely. Now, if we just hold it there a minute and go back, it's important just to focus on what the letter of the law is saying here, which is that a person to whom this section applies, and we'll see more about who this applies to specifically in the next part of this video, may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances. Now, if you've been following some of the other mini tutorials we've been doing here, you recognise this terminology, as it's also used in section 3 brackets 1 of the Criminal Law Act 1967, which is the wider right to use force in relation to the prevention of crime that all persons in the UK have. And it is defined under the law that what is reasonable is basically what is necessary and proportionate in the circumstances. And if you'd like to know more about this, there is a free series of videos which we've done in relation to reasonable force that you might like to check out, and you'll find the link for it here. So same as the wider law regarding reasonable force, the force has to be reasonable in the circumstances. Now if you check out the excellent non-statutory DfE guidance which came out in 2013 in relation to the use of force in schools, which you can download for free from the government's website, you'll see that it defines this as using no more force than is needed. So if you put this in the context of the wider law, this means that any force used should be necessary and proportionate in preventing a greater harm from occurring and to go any further than this would be to use excessive force. So the amount of force used should be necessary and proportionate as is needed. So the circumstances where force can be used are as follows. A. Committing any offence. That is any offence which can be committed by a person over the age of criminal responsibility, which is 10 years in the UK. B. Causing personal injury to or damage to the property of any person, including the pupil himself. So force can be used to prevent a pupil causing injury to themselves or others or damaging property, which effectively covers all ages, similar to the common law right to use reasonable force. Or C, prejudicing the maintenance of good order and discipline at the school or among any pupils receiving education at the school, whether during a teaching session or otherwise. And this relates to the maintenance of order and discipline in general within the school. So force can be used to preserve this or restore order and discipline. These last two points are reinforced by the DfE guidance and the guidance does list some good examples of where and how force might be used in a school environment. So again, it is worthwhile downloading and reading this guidance for yourself. 